Hey, good evening, everyone. Thanks for letting uh, Brenda and I crash uh, Marilyn Wing. Uh, Colonel Lepre, thanks for having us. I appreciate uh, <clears throat> you taking the time out of your schedule to join us uh, so we can talk a little bit about Civil Air Patrol's Volunteer University. Uh, Brenda, thanks for uh, setting this up as well. Uh, and uh, I know we've got a number of folks uh, from around the country on, on the uh, presentation as well. So we've got some folks from Ohio, uh, from Delaware, from Texas, and the Mid-Atlantic Region headquarters as well. So thank you for joining us as well. So as Brenda pulls up the, the slides, I think you're going to full screen on us, Brenda, maybe, on the slides. First presentation view. Uh, perfect. So as uh, so as Brenda is um, is going to navigate the slides for us, uh, I'm going to refer down to a couple of notes that I've got because we've got a lot of great information to share with you. Um, but like Brenda said, uh, keep the chats going and we'll try to monitor the chat and answer the chat as we go along. But um, <clears throat> before we move on to the next slide, what I want to just sort of um, talk about first is volunteer university and the concept of volunteer university. Uh, and when I think about this change, it's it's revolutionary. Uh, it's revolutionary in the sense of that we've had a really a stagnant Civil Air Patrol professional development program for 20 plus years. Uh, and this is the first time from really what I would call soup to nuts that we've gone in and changed the entire construct of the Civil Air Patrol professional development program uh, to what our entire program, that, that terminology is going away and we're calling it the education and training program as a whole. Um, so it really brings the professional development program into the future in today's sort of current day uh, mindset and, and sort of educational basis. Um, and it aligns us with other organizations that we're alike. And, and quite honestly, it makes us as professional, if not more professional than a lot of our, what I call competition or near and peer organizations that have similar goals and objectives. Next slide, please, Brenda. All right, so uh, how, how did this program sort of come to fruition? Uh, the reality is back in 2017, roughly uh, in the middle part of 2017, uh, Major General Smith uh, organized a, a, what he uh, frequently calls a cross-functional working group. Uh, and, the, and the name that came out of that working group was the Leadership uh, Working Group, or the LW, uh, LDWG. Uh, and in the LDWG, it was split up by a whole host of uh, unique and, and, and uh, incredible opportunities that we were going to embrace upon professional development. We had uh, some intentional time talking about mentorship. We had some intentional time talking about each of the levels, one through five, and kind of revamping that um, uh, curriculum and, and making it more fresh and current to the current regulations, to the current climate, to the current educational sort of basis, as, as I'll continuously talk to. Um, next slide, please. <clears throat> so why? Uh, and as we think about the why did we make this change, it was really, if you look back in time, and, and these three pictures I think would do a good job. Our program uh, was word-based was word -based, uh, in a sense of that it was pen and paper, uh, and pencil and paper. Uh, it was books. It was stacks of books that we would get mailed to our homes, and we'd have to go through and learn about the professional development program. Uh, and technology certainly was different back then, right? There was massive computers to do what, what we really try to do, which is on the next slide. The next slide, this is now, right? So we have, we have our... our uh, our little ones out there on, uh, glued to an iPhone. You know, it was fascinating to me just a couple of years ago to stand in line behind uh, a young family in a grocery store and you just watch a two or three year old swiping away on their, uh, on their device in their hand, right? So the technology that has been embraced at, at our youth and certainly our cadet program, but even predates our cadet program, it's everywhere we're at. Uh, and I would argue that welcome to COVID. Uh, look at the challenges that we all collectively has, have faced through COVID uh, and look at the technology that we have available here right in, in Maryland Wing. The ability to use GoToMeeting, the ability to engage uh, in, in folks in a remote distance learning type mentality uh, or virtual mentality. Um, and that's one component of our, our program. Um, so so the, the, the concept was let's bring the program into current day technology and use that technology to aid this program. And so as we, we thought about why, uh, we, we thought about our members and what can we do to better support and engage our membership. And what I'd like to do is run you through three very quick vignettes, uh, and we'll call them Charlie, Jordan, and Pat. You see, the, the, the way that we looked at our, our changing our program is the, this idea that it's going to meet our, our diverse population in the Civil Air Patrol. And when I think about Charlie, uh, I think about Charlie, not, not our own Charlie Davis, Mr. Davis, by the way. But uh, when I think about Charlie, I think Charlie is a guy who works two jobs. Uh, Charlie is a gentleman who 
uh, doesn't have enough time to necessarily fully engage in Civil Air Patrol every single week, but is going to do his darndest to stay engaged. And he's passionate about continuing his professional and personal growth. So this program might make sense for, for Charlie to better enable him to continue with his passion and his growth in Civil Air Patrol, but also remain connected because he just can't simply get to every weekend that we might be asking him to attend a professional development course uh, or um, you know, uh, engaging on a squatter meeting every single week. He may have to take two or three off because his jobs are demanding. Then I think about somebody like Jordan, and Jordan is the person that we think about who is, a, is that go-getter. You know, former cadet, completed the cadet program, was a spots cadet, you know, kind of thought that, hey, I'm a former cadet, I know all there is to know about Civil Air Patrol. You know, he might be currently in, working in government. So super uh, engaged, very uh, advanced in his personal life and his personal pursuits. Uh, but he may have some sort of other affiliations with other organizations. So this program gives him the flexibility to kind of take in uh, and recognize, hey, this is somebody who wants to take on professional development at his own pace, at his own, own demand and kind of go from there. And then I think about Pat. Pat's a member who unfortunately has a disability, and that disability prevents Pat from being actively engaged in our program. Uh, Pat, although we are very fortunate to have Pat in our organization, you know, they, they have to rely upon a driver to get them to uh, additional meetings. So this new educational training program through what we're going to call Volunteer University gives that individual an opportunity still stay, to still stay engaged uh, in a very meaningful way. Next slide. So what does our program look like? <clears throat> Well, the structure of our program is built upon a higher education model. Uh, and that model that it's built upon would, would be very similar to anything that you'd see in a college or university setting. We have modules instead of courses. And we intentionally uh, took that approach of having modules because it's gonna give us that flexibility. Modules gives us that flexibility of being updated in near real time, right? The, the most, how, how many of us have gone through an experience in Civil Air Patrol where we get a regu regulation and we say, gosh, that's already outdated because there's a change letter, or that theory is no longer applied, or that emergency services task is better served by doing this type of mission, or we use this communication tool now. You get my point. Modules will give us a chance to uh, change our program in near real time, uh, and it's based on a, an adult learning model. Um, that adult learning model was built and tested through a number of doctoral students. So if I was to back up for a second and just talk a little bit about the Leadership Development Working Group. So again, that was a cross-functional team effort from members from all across the country, from all backgrounds and disciplines. We had some members that were brand new to the senior member program. We had some members who were 50-year members. We had some members uh, that ultimately were professional development officers, but not just professional development officers. We had our cadet programs gurus. We had our emergency services gurus. So again, a very diverse group of folks who came up to help us rewrite this curriculum from levels, what we would call levels one through five. And in that construct, um, we then tasked it to a group of doctoral students who were doing an internship that we quote unquote hired to validate using that adult learning model. Hey, does this make sense to an average adult uh, through that learning construct? Our program is certainly flexible uh, and, and inclusive. When we talk about flexible, we're going to give you a roadmap that makes sense. Hey, it, you should take this course before you take this course. Excuse me, I'm saying course. You should take this module before you take this module. And that's going to be an ideal situation. But again, it's built upon flexibility. Brent is going to talk a little bit about online and, and on-site meaning that we have this ability to run this course in both of those two modalities. Uh, but the nice thing is you don't have to do it all just online. You can do it on site or vice versa. You don't have to just do it all on site. You can do it online. So it creates an awesome, in my opinion, blend to have that. And plus it gives us a chance to give you more flexibility uh, to, to navigate as you go through your, your professional development program. And the last component about what it looks like is that it's that squitter type record. So the SQTR program, we kind of merged that over with our great partners in National Headquarters IT and allow them to help build us this model where before you can get credit, it will, the system will automatically identify. Um, I wish I had a bunch of screenshots to show you. I think folks are going to be blown away by the amount of work that's taken place on the IT back end to help facilitate our new rollout of this program. One of the things that I'm personally passionate about and I, I'm, I'm incredibly humbled to see has come to uh, fruition is that this program is going to generate, for lack of a better term, a transcript. It's going to be able to provide you, hey, these are all the courses that I've completed to help sort of build uh, and give you a nice record and a, a clean path for you to show your accomplishments, something that you should be very proud of. Next slide, please. 
So what are the themes? All of our, our modules were based upon these themes, core values, safety, leadership, communication, diversity, and mentoring. All of the modules had that lens built into it, and we validated those core themes as knowing that that's what we're passionate about. That was, that's what makes Civil Air Patrol unique, is that we value these themes, and, we're going, we, and we infuse those themes throughout all of our modules. So who built it? Next slide, please. Well, like I said, 200 plus incredible diverse volunteers from across the country, and there's a couple of folks that you might see if you if you squint uh, really really small on that, uh, you might recognize some of those folks. A lot of Maryland folks that uh, uh, helped participate in this program and took us uh, across the finish line. Um, and ultimately, what was their idea that they came up with? Next slide, please. It's Volunteer University. Uh, we wanted to, to build an organization that had that flexible format, that gave us that brand identity, that had that common interest and provided us that quality control. And that's where really Volunteer University was born. Um, this, this module sense of that, it gives us that identity. And oh, by the way, what a unique opportunity for us to set ourselves aside from our peers and say, we've got this program where we value the education of our members. Next slide, please. So what is this crazy new entity? You know, uh, Colonel Reed was able to throw up uh, the link and, and the email address, and I encourage you uh, after this presentation to go out there and look at the website if you haven't yet. Uh, this is our initial website. It's more meant to be um, our Q&A uh, platform. Um, we will continue to build out our website, but ultimately this is going to, again, brand us as an organization, but give you some uh, unique opportunities to answer some of those uh, questions and answers and frequently asked questions, which I know that we'll get to at the end of this presentation. So next slide, which is actually my last slide, um, is who's, who's our key staff? So like I mentioned in one of the first couple slides that our program was built upon a higher education module or, or mentality. Um, we have a chief of education and training, and that's Colonel Regina A. Colonel A is uh, an incredible, uh, I'm, I feel uh, feel dumb every time I chat with, with uh, Colonel A. Uh, she's an educator by formal training. She's uh, got a PhD. She runs an online program at a university. Uh, and uh, she most recently was the North Central Region Commander. Um, so she just recently rotated out of command and she's taking all over all of the chief in education and training. Kind of a unique model. It's typically held by a paid volunteer member, but she's going to stay on as a volunteer member uh, and run the entire education tra training program for the Civil Air Patrol. And under that program, you, you see the coming soon on, on the far right there, specialty tracks. So there'll be a point of contact that will address specialty tracks. Uh, Colonel Rose Hunt, uh, the most recent uh, Wisconsin Wing Commander. Uh, she's running our mentoring program, a, a program that uh, General Smith is very passionate about, of, of standing up and continuing to grow uh, a, a true bona fide mentorship program. And then ultimately, it's the Volunteer University, where I have the privilege to serve as the provost. So think about the provost as like the chief academic officer. Uh, and I've got two deans, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Brent Reed, who uh, most all of you on this call know is going to serve as our dean of online training. She brings with her a vast bit of knowledge from working the online programs prior and during the, the birth of the Leadership Development Working Group, and Colonel Barry Melton, who's our Dean of our on-site training. And Colonel Melton is most recently the Southeast Region Commander. We built the, the Civil Air Patrol Volunteer University based upon the modules that uh, each of those uh, organizations and each modality will have an online chair, one for each level, and the same thing for on-site, five, five on-site chairs, one for each level. And then ultimately below that is instructors and assistant, assistant instructors, which uh, I think we talk about but I'll just quickly highlight. Um, we, we need you. We want you. We want you to, to sign up to be an instructor. Uh, I'm very, very comfortable with knowing that we have a, an incredible program where we're going to put you through a training, uh, which we, we're pretty confident that will take uh, roughly a week if you do it on, online. Uh, or a day if you do it in person, where we're going to get you through to understand, appreciate what it is, some best tips to be an instructor. Once you, you take that course, we put you into what we call an assistant instructor. And just like in the ES world, we give you a check ride, uh, provided you do well in the classroom through a, sort of a, a, an in person or on site or online, excuse me, course, um, we're going to get you qualified as an instructor. All right, so with that, I talked a lot. And I talk fast, so about 16 minutes uh, into it, I'm going to turn it back over to uh, Colonel Reed, and, and I'm going to stand by and help you out as we go along, Colonel Reed. Thanks. All right, I'm very excited to be part of Volunteer University. I'm very thankful that uh, they brought me on board. Uh, we have a great team. Uh, I have five online chairs, but also we have five on-site chairs, and they're doing their best to to make this happen. Uh, I don't know that we mentioned it, but the launch date is August 4th, so we're only a month out of making this happen. So let's talk a little bit about the, the, the details of this. Well, 
before I do, before I get into the details, this is part of it, and uh, Colonel Winter did touch on this. This is probably the thing I'm most excited about is you can customize your training now. Um, and I'm calling it training. I'm not calling it professional development because we're getting out of that mindset. This is education and training and is no longer called present, um, professional development. Um, and just like, you know, we, we're not gonna call them courses, we're gonna call them modules. So start thinking education and training. But in your training, you can do it either online, completely online, you can do it completely on site, or you can do a blended version. And uh, I meant I just unmute. If you can just make sure you you stay muted for this. If you have questions, put them in the chat box. Okay, so you can do it completely online. For those of you who work weekends, you have children, you have young, you know, you, you have responsibilities outside of of the uh, you know the time that CAP normally does these you know training weekends. Um, and you can't make them. I know for me, um, I, I feel for me, I, it, it was a while before I could finish my training because I wasn't available on the weekends. You know, for a while there, I was overseas. I couldn't get to Regent Staff College for a couple of years. Um, but then, you know what? I know that online is not for everybody. So on site is uh, another way. If you prefer that on site, that face to face classroom interaction, you can do that as well. Um, or, and I think this is what a lot of us are going to wind up doing, you can do a blended approach. Um, you can do some of it online, you can do some of it on site, and you just make it work for what happen, you know, what is your schedule. So that, that really excites me. Okay, so let's look at the various levels and how, how are we actually going to implement this program? What's it gonna look like for you as the member? So, oh, wrong slide, there we go. So what's it gonna look like? Uh, you have a brand new member in your squadron, you know, or, or they're not even a member yet, they've just arrived at your squadron and they wanna know what is this whole CAP thing about? Well, you know, just like we ask cadets to come three meetings, you know, you you want you have a senior member a potential senior member come for those three meetings. Uh, so what what is the focus of this? What we're calling a pre membership stage. Um, well, we're we're going to standardize the information that these prospective members are getting. You know, at this point, every squadron kind of does it a little little different. Some of them just kind of talk a little bit, you know, in generalities. Wait for them to put their application in, and then figure well they're going to get all of this when they do that level one online, you know, that everybody has to do. But we're gonna, we're gonna take care of our members a lot better now, um, our new members. Um, we're, we're going to give them more standard information. We're gonna give them steps for each meeting. What do you do now? We're gonna capture that enthusiasm that they have while they are brand new. And then we're going, we're going to give them some expectations. This is what we kind of, ex this is what we expect as from a new member. And as far as your, your training and your, you know, whether it be your uniform or your duty assignment or whatever, we're gonna give those, them those expectations so that hopefully they, they know what's to expected, know, know what they expect to be expected and they will, uh, you know, they'll, they'll stay in as members. They won't get over, overwhelmed because we just keep throwing new things at them. And then we're gonna celebrate our new members. So we have some pre-membership modules. Okay, so you so each of these boxes that you see here are the white boxes at the bottom. Those are what the module names are. And each of our modules are meant, if in the online side, they can be done anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour, depending on the information. So yes, that looks like a lot of information right there, but it's small chunks. Okay, they're modules, they're not courses. And if you put this in the perspective of an SLS where it would have been two full days on a weekend, plus your travel, that could be up to 16 hours of your time for a weekend. So put it in that perspective and it's really not that much. So your first meeting with this new member, you're gonna give them your expectations. You'll talk about our missions, the types of members, and then you'll give them a checklist and an application. The next meeting they come in and you sit down with them, you tell them a little bit more, you explain how we're part of the civil, of the total force, a little about history, what kind of duty assignments do we have? And then you, you put them through that uh, required unit membership board. 
um, meeting three, they come back, they got their application all ready. You talk a little bit more about uniforms, chain of command, they turn in their application, you do an oath ceremony, you make them, you celebrate that they're joining Civil Air Patrol. And that's what we're going to do in our pre-membership. Now, most of these will probably be done in the squadron by a qualified instructor through Volunteer University. And we'll get to how you become a qualified instructor and who can be one. Uh, most of these will probably be done at the squadron meeting. But remember, you can do anything on site or online. So these modules will also be available online. There will be a couple public faced modules for those who are not members yet. So they can't obviously get into e-services, into our new learning management system. But these will be access, accessible to them. So let's see. Okay. Um, level one. Now, this is where we're going to be onboarding our new member. Now, this is typically, you'll see this, this has got a lot more in it. Um, this level one, and I, I'm sorry, this is where the cadet protection and all of that comes in. Um, this is that old foundations class, that course, that's going away. And so we're giving members more time, more information early on to get them started. So, and it's broken down again in small usable chunks. Again, anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour a module that they can just, you know, if they have some time, lunch hour, they can knock it out right there. Um, why are we, you know, what, what is this? This is, this is going to just engage the individual right away. Should take them no more than about four to six hours over the course. We'd like them to complete this in about 30 days. Typically, our newest members are very excited. They're very interested. They're, um, they want to do this. So um, this is our, our level one. And these, this is some of the, tra the training modules, uh, cadet protection, diversity, equal opportunity, and so on. You'll, you'll see that it, it also gives an introduction to e-services, which those of you who have worked with some new members, that's usually the biggest issue is e-services is not that intuitive. So it's going to help them learn e-services as well. So they finish level one. Great. Okay. Um, then what happens next? We move on to level two, which I find is, uh, I think is, is a real neat concept that we're, we're moving into. And this is a big difference in our program. So with level two, as you know, we have all kinds of new members. Okay. We have members who are either currently or former military. They bring a certain knowledge, experience, skill set to the membership, to the organization. We also have former cadets. Okay, former cadet has got a lot of information about CAP. They don't know everything, but they usually know a lot more than a bunch of us. You have members who are there and have, are going to receive a, an advanced grade, whether they were a, they're a pilot or maybe they were, they're an accountant or a lawyer or some of these um, various uh, professional, um, professionalisms that allow for this advanced grade. So we have those category. And then you have other people. And, and this is where I fit in. I was a new member. I didn't have any of that stuff. So basically, you have the person who's coming in, and this is all new. So we have these four categories. So level two is, is uh, split up into two parts. So the top part here, the learning phase, this is a core group of modules. Everybody is going to be taking that core group. We want everybody to know this stuff. However, if you start to look at former military, you know what, a for, somebody who's currently a former military or a former cadet, they don't really need to know how to do drill. Okay, they, you know, they, they know how to do that. So, you know, you notice that, that those things are not in this core part one. These are the things that everybody needs to know. And then there's a part two. And the part two is where they're gonna break into tracks or paths. So the former military, and you can see some of these, you know, they're gonna be doing CAP customs and courtesies. Former military already know customs and courtesies. But how does CAP do customs and courtesies? Uh, CAP uniforms. You know what? Our uniforms are a little bit different from, you know, the Air Force. How do they differ? Um, and this is a big one, I think, for, for military is serving with volunteers. You know, it's been said, you know, volunteers, we can walk with our feet. You know, we're not getting that paycheck. Um, so you can't treat volunteers the same way you would treat a military member. So those are the kinds of uh, modules that would be in that path. 
uh, former cadet is going to learn about uniform differences, working with adult volunteers, how to transition from a cadet leadership to senior followership, uh, professional grades, um, and they've got an advanced grade. So they're going to still, you know, some of them, they're going to need to know customs and courtesies and uniforms and working with volunteers. But there's also in there, there just like the military, it's like you've got an advanced grade. What are our expectations for you? It's not, okay, Here, here's your major. Now you can sit and not do anything. We still have expectations that you're going to participate in your education and training. And then you have the new member. And the new member just needs the basics. You know, They need customs and courtesies, uniforms, serving with volunteers. So you can see um, a consistency here, but the, the, um, there's other things that they're going to, new members going to need to know that basic drill, uh, followership, professionalism, leadership fundamentals. So this is our level two. It's in two parts and a little bit later in the briefing, I'll show you how that works as far as promotions. Level three, okay, you finished level two, both parts. Now you're into the leadership phase. You know, very similar to the cadets. You know, they have a followership, they have a leadership. And so we have these different phases and this is our level three. Minimum time for this level because you are working with a, you know, promotions and you have other requirements similar to our, our uh, development program now, but we're looking at about 24 months in this program. If you look at, that's a lot of modules. If you're the training, the member right here, this in the middle, those are the modules I'm talking about. Those are the level three modules. These modules over here, training the commander, you know, some people want to be a commander and that's great. They need training. Um, but there's a lot of members that <laughs> You say, uh, how about being a commander? And they're like, no way. So they don't really need to know the information of what a commander needs. Now, if they can take it, I recommend it because it's a better way to support your commander. But there are other, there's additional training that commanders need that the, the average member who's working in the squadron, maybe working in the group, they don't need to know all of this uh you know, how, how the commander functions and these services works. So level three is giving you a higher level of training. You're building on the foundation of level one and level two, and you're, um, you're learning more. You're, ha you're putting this into practice with the other things that you need to get promoted. And then you have this additional training for the commander. Now on level three, this command would be at a squadron commander level. Uh, pretty much it's your basic command functions. Uh, you'll see one of the modules there is the role and responsibilities of the, of the flight and squadron commander. So this training is for the new commander. You'll see as we move on, there is other training as, as you go on. So level three, okay, you've been in a few years, 24 months, you've got level three, what's next? You know, and this is uh, level four. This is where a lot, where we have a lot of people in CAP right now sort of hanging out. You know, they haven't been able to finish level four or maybe they got level four, but they haven't been able to do level five because they haven't been able to get to region staff college. They haven't gotten to national staff college. They can't take that week away from their family, their jobs. Maybe they don't have the vacation. They need babysitter, whatever it is. So this is the exciting part is we're going to be able to make it so that those members can continue their professional development. They're not gonna be just in this limbo because they can't get away for a week. Um, so like the other levels, we're going to have training the member modules. And you see these modules, they're getting a little bit, you're getting a few more. But again, these modules, if you're, if you're looking at anywhere from you know 15 minutes to an hour per module, um, they can be done again on site, or they can be done online. Now, as we move through these modules online, you're gonna go from level one is pretty much self-paced. As you move higher up in the levels, it's not, you know, we've gotten away from that here. Read this slide deck and take a 10 question quiz. That's not, that's not education. So we're getting into a more, um, I think not hands on, on the, in the online world, but uh, you know, we're gonna have, uh, some practical things to do. You're gonna have discussions. You're going to be in a cohort. So along each way, if you're in these levels, you'll be in a cohort. So you'll be with some others from around the nation that are moving through just like you. And you know, the beauty of that is you're gonna meet people from all across the nation. 
you're not, it's not just going to be people from your squadron or your wing. So uh, these are the different, the different levels, you know, the, the, the different modules for level four. Um, and then you can see we also have another set of training for the commander. And this is the group commander level. So maybe you've been a squadron commander and you're looking to be a group commander at some point. So we've got some stuff for you to, to train and to build your build, build your, uh, your knowledge so that you, you can put it to practice at a group command level. So this is level four. Um, and I will get into some more about how, how what if you've already got some of this, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of questions and this is just the beginning. So there's lots to come. So let's see, the next is, uh, you know, after you've got been a group commander, okay, then, you know, what's the old UCC unit commanders course. Now we'll, we'll have, uh, we have modules for training the wing commander, you know, wing commanders typically go down to Maxwell and do, you know, the, the wing commander course. So these are the different things that uh, the wing commander uh, training would look like. Okay, now level five. And this is where, you know, a lot of you who have not been able to take National Staff College, um, I know for me, I wasn't able to do that. So I did Air Command and Staff College. It took me 18 months. Um, but, you know, this is for the member that, you know, doesn't want to do either of those options. National Staff College isn't an option anymore. This is a better opportunity. So again, we have training the member. And look at all these different things. This is the executive leadership phase. And a lot of these modules here, you're going to be able to apply those to your day jobs, to your other, to your outside CAP world, you know, ethics, strategic leadership, executive leadership, leadership trends, self-development, mentoring. Uh, these are all things that you're going to be able to use outside of CAP, you know, in addition. So, You'll see a lot of this is um, just the, the different modules. You can see how it's just more intense. You're, you're getting away from just that basic member and you know, new member stuff. And we also, here we have uh, something new. We have uh, training to be the region commander. Now, I assume that not too many people are going to be taking these modules, but you know we also have training for the region commander. And you'll see this ends with a capstone. Uh, the level five. And because remember that when you're in the level five section, a lot of it you're, you're going to be doing as a cohort. Uh, you're going to have, you know, online, if you're doing it online, you're going to be, you know, working, you're not just going to be reading and taking quizzes, you're going to have things to do. But also remember, these can be done on site. So as well. So let, before we talk about how those are going to be done on site, let's let's look at some timelines. Um, so, uh, this is, this is an old slide deck. So some of this is, is pretty much out of date and it, it, it's too late. We're, we're within a month of our launch. So the old officer basic course, uh, right now it was only done online. The last class could start the beginning of June. Okay. We're July 1st. If you haven't completed officer basic course by July, you know, uh, 31st, it, it's not going to count towards anything. Um, CLC, SLS, there's, you need to complete these by July 31st. The online ones that National has been offering are done. The last ones are just wrapping up. They're not going to be offering those anymore. So if your wing has a, you know, and it's really difficult in this COVID age um, to have an in-residence, uh, and otherwise, uh, you'll just move on to the new program if you haven't gotten these. And I'm going to get into that. How how does what if I have CLC? How does that going to affect me? I will we will be getting into that. Um, Region Staff College COVID really took a took a hit, you know, on us. So we uh, you know there were a few Region Staff Colleges out there that went went uh, virtual, and some of them they had really long wait lists. So um, you know, Region Staff College is, is done. You don't have any more opportunities for that. And National Staff College is just wrapping up. They wound up having to go virtual in the, in the with COVID as well. Um, and UCC, the last online offering for the National UCC was in May. Wings could still offer it until the end of July. What, what does all this mean for you? Okay, so you have a, we have some grandfather periods. Okay, so you're looking at, 
you know, I have done some stuff. I've been working towards my level four. I, do I have to throw everything out and start over? E no, you don't have to, but you may. And so let's just talk about this. So if you're brand new, you're level one, there's no grandfathering, okay? You're just gonna transition over to this new program on August 4th, okay? If you are level two, you still have a transition date of for August. However, if you already have SLS completed and you've done your officer basic course, then you have three months to finish the rest of your level, okay? Um, but you have to have those done in order to get that three month grandfathering. So what does that mean? And I've got the old, uh, the old chart here. So what would that mean for level two? That would mean um, that you would have to have your technician rating um, in or, and um, SLS and officer basic. So if you have SLS and you have officer basic, but say you've got six more months of your specialty track to get that technician rating, then, you know, I'm sorry, but you're not going to be able to be grandfathered. But if you're within three months, then yes, you can be grandfathered to complete the program. Um, otherwise, you are going to just have to switch. And if you don't have SLS or officer basic, then August 4th, you just start the new program. And so similarly, level three, if you have CLC completed, you have six months to complete the legacy program. So that's six months based off of the current regulation because there is going to be a new education and training regulation coming out. Um, if you don't have CLC, then you will switch to the new program. Level four, same thing. If you've been able to get Regent Staff College and you've just got a few more things to do, uh, you have nine months to finish your level four and then you don't lose what you've already worked on with, with Region Staff College. If you don't have Region Staff College, and at this point, if you don't have it, then you're just gonna have to switch to the new program. Um, I know it seems harsh, but we had to make, we had to make some, some calls on this. Uh, level five, if you have not been able to complete National Staff College, um, then you switch to the new program. Um, if you do have National Staff College completed, or you will by the end of uh, July, then you have nine months to complete the other requirements. And if you remember, some of those requirements were to serve as a staff member for a course or educational activity, mentor a junior officer, and of course, for your level four, you would already have a master rating. So those are that's the grandfather period. Christmas. All right, so this is what this new chart looks like, and it's got a lot of colors here. Um, so it's that old chart, you know, where you, you explains each level and what are the requirements. So if you look at this, um, there's some colors here, and I'm going to try and make a little bit of sense. Uh, and it just kind of reviews and just puts in a different visual format what I've been saying. Um, so up here, your level one. You basically are gonna create, you're gonna do your level one modules, and then that earns you that level one membership ribbon. Level, now you have um, level level two, and you have, see that part one, and you have part two. Prerequisite, before you can start the level two modules, you have to complete the level one modules. In the online side, you won't even have access to them until you have completed. Uh, but you, you, you know, think of it as ops calls. You know, you, you, do, you don't start out, uh, you know, getting qualified as a mission observer until you finish mission scanner. So same concept, okay? But here, this is that change in level two. We have two parts. So you have part one in level two, and these are those part one, those core modules that everybody takes. And so you take those, you pick a specialty track, and you, um, you know, and then phase two, you have the, the level two modules. Now, if you do all of that, and you know, if you, if, you just, if you just do the part one modules, that's going to get you enough for that second lieutenant. You know, right now you finish level one, you put in six months, boom, you know, you're, you're a second lieutenant. Well, at this point now, it's, you do level one, and then you do part one of level two, and that will get you your second lieutenant. Once you do part two of level two, along with choosing a specialty track and earning a technician rating in it, and new 
in this one, it's been moved, you earn your Earhart Award. Okay, your Earhart Award used to be in level three, now it's going to be in level two. So when you've done all of that and you've achieved, you've done both parts of level two, you've gotten your Earhart, your technician rating, and you've done everything, then you get your, the Davis Award, and when you've done time and grade, you can become a first lieutenant. Okay, then the rest of them, uh, level three pretty much is pretty much the same. Uh, you have to have level two prerequisites to do the level three modules. You have to be in a command or staff assignment for a year. You have to have a senior rating and a specialty track, attend two national region or wing conferences. And this is a little bit new one here. You have to, um, and I'm just looking, double checking my chart. Yes. So you have to mentor a member through level one. And then that gets you that learning award and the possibility for captain, depending on your time and grade. Level four, two years command or staff assignment, the level four modules, master in your specialty track. And now these two bright yellow ones, uh, these are new. You're gonna serve, or you serve on faculty or national region or wing conference staff. So faculty, what is that? Volunteer university, those are our instructors. You make a presentation or an AE presentation, that, that doesn't change, and there's your Garber Award. And so that would be for, for major. Um, you know, time again, time and grade again. Um, finally, level five, executive leadership phase. Now this changes a little bit because your commander staff's assignment, they want you to have three years and you need to be ha have to have some at the group or higher level. So if you're, remember this is executive leadership. So uh, if you're, if you're, you know, just working at the squadron, you know, you want, you want to set those goals to, to be a little bit higher, work at the group, work at work at the wing, um, you know, it's it's different. It gives you a different exposure. I highly recommend it, uh, but that will be a requirement there. Uh, you already have your master rating, so your specialty track doesn't have anything in it. And then you will need to serve on faculty or staff at an activity in the 50-17. And so those are listed in the back of the uh, current regulation. And again, we have a new regulation, so they will have that in the addendum. And then, for level five also, you're going to mentor a member through their tech rating in a specialty track. And a bunch of the specialty tracks already require this, so it's not really an added item there. If you've already gotten your master rating, you should, you should have already mentored somebody. And if you're at the level five stage, that's what we should be doing anyways, is mentoring our other members. And then again, that's the Wilson Award, the highest senior member award you can get. And, uh, You'll be eligible for lieutenant colonel. So, what's the process? So, there's it's you know, online through eServices. There's going to be a way to uh, register. It's not open yet, okay? But there will be a way to register. You will be put into cohorts. You will have there's continuous improvements. We will constantly be updating materials, the content, our chairs. Even now, the materials are just. Out, are, are, aren't even you know out there yet, and they're already reviewing them to make sure that you know a year ago when they were written, has anything changed since then? So, um, so you'll you'll have availability through cohorts, and you'll also have availability at your wing and squadron and uh, group. And then we're going to build a, an online community, you know, and that's that's a really neat part. Is you know here in Maryland, we all know each other. And that's great, but when you start reaching out to what are people doing in other wings, you learn best practices, you get great ideas. And so when you see those things, uh, you can bring them back to, to your wing, to your squadron, and improve. Colonel Colonel Winter did talk about you know kind of the obsqual Twitter system. So it's you know your your set qualifications. You um, if you're going to evaluate somebody on this, just like in ops, you know in an ES world you need to be set qualified. So what does that mean? Well, you have to have the level, you have to have the time, you do the approval, and there are limited waivers, uh, but those work up through the leadership, they work up through the chairs, through the deans, and ultimately the provost. Um, you have to have the level. So you can't, you know, nowadays, SLS, you know, oh yeah, I'll teach that. You know, I know what mentoring is. And you say you're a level three, and you go and you teach, you know, you teach something, you know, 
at National Staff College or Region Staff College. And, and it's been done. You've had people who have not taken those courses and they've taught. Um, or, you know, you teach CLC and you haven't even taken it yet. Okay, you have to have the level. If you are a level three, you can teach level three, level two, level one. You can't teach level four or level five because you don't, you have not achieved that level. Uh, you have to have the time. You have to have been in the, that level that you're teaching at least a year. So similar to the set system, you have to have, you have to hold that qualification for a year before you can teach it. So instead of a qualification, it's the level. We're not uh, qualifying people based on module, we're qualifying you based on level. Training is going to be um, constructive feedback. You're going to have your, um, so this is for your instructors. Uh, the, you'll get constructive feedback. We're going to talk about facilitating discussions. How do you deliver instruction to volunteers? And eventually, how do we write curriculum for volunteers? There is a, there is an instructor course right now. At this point, we're off. We're we're, we're starting to go through our uh, instructor applicants. We have over 500 applicants right now, but we need a lot more. Right now, the course is online, but it will after you know post COVID and we can start doing things. Then we can also offer that on site. Expectations: instructors are going to need to grade. They're going to need to take care of questions and responses, and they're going to you know work through you know their their student instructor ratios you're going to have a you're going to have you know um about 25 students in your cohort and when you're working through a cohort at least online uh you're going to have several instructors helping you it's not going to be you doing a whole level by yourself um, as you become qualified and you, you become an assistant instructor and you, you you teach at that level for a little bit you get your check ride and then you can you're off you're on your own you can start you know qualifying people we are always there to mentor to help you to guide you and eventually you would be qualifying other instructors okay so how does this work for you at the squadron level or at the wing or at the group uh, so i'm going to give you some sample schedules to see how you can actually put all of these modules into place okay because you can do them online but say you want to do them here on site in residence Okay, now we're gonna look at level three. Okay, and this is a quarterly plan. Now, assuming that you need two years, minimum 24 months to do level three. You're at your squadron, you've got a bunch of level two people at your squadron and you, you know, you're you the education and training officer or you're the commander and you go, well, let's start working. Let's do a structured planned process to meet the needs of our members. So we're gonna do a quarterly plan over two years. First quarter of year one, you know, we're gonna teach four modules. So think about that, a quarter is what, three months, you're gonna teach four modules. That's just, a, you know, a little over one module a month. So you take one meeting each month and you devote it to training and for your senior members. And then the, you do this through your second, your third, your fourth quarters. Next year, you do a few more. and they've. We've got them here in a, ni in a nice order, but you can do them in any order. And then there's some wing emphasis items. So say your wing wants to do some of these. Now, if you look, three, three of them, you, a wing could do, they could do some of these on a weekend. You know, working with CAC, compliance requirements, legal and complaint process. You know what, those are good wing conference sessions. You're looking at, you know, about an hour to get through these. That's a nice wing conference session you can do these at a wing conference or an education and training weekend or at your squadron or you can do them online it's up to you so that's one way that you could do it just you know for a quarter for two years 24 months and then all of a sudden you know what you've got a whole bunch. you get your new members and they're, they've reached their level three you're helping to meet their needs you could also do a monthly plan and this is a little bit similar Okay, again, level three, 24 months. So here you go, you've got a one a month. And then down at the bottom, you've got a few things that are wing emphasis, safety, risk management, working with CAC, and you could delegate, you know, core values, delegate that out. A wing could do this. You know, you have, you have a, a wing meeting once a month where you're offering something like this. Um, it's doable, it's very doable because we're breaking it down into bite-sized chunks. It's not, go for a whole weekend 
and have death by PowerPoint and you know get it over with. This is where it's meaningful. You can apply what you're learning. Okay, or here's another option. You know what? You could have that education and training weekend. You can, you know, a wing could do this twice a year and do everything in two weekends a year. Okay, you have a Friday night, two sessions, all day Saturday, half a day Sunday, do that twice a year. Boom. You've gone through all of the modules and that in an in an on on-site system. So that's doable. That's another way you could do it. And you can do this with any of the levels. Um, Here's a week long. So think of this, this is another way to say what used to be Region Staff College. You could have a week long education and training event sponsored by a wing or a region. And if you look at it, it looks very similar to what used to be a Region Staff College. So if you had a number of people who were able to take a week and wanted to do this, you could do this. It's, it's, we're not telling you, you know, no, there's so many options out here and it's just use your creativity at your squadron, your group and your wing level to get some of these uh, things done. So there's various things here that you could also uh, map out who, who has more responsibility and uh, you could assign these two units and this could be a different way to do it. The wing could say, well, hey, we are level three. We're going to have all of the units teach the, teach the members publications, core values, team volunteer, you know, effective volunteer teams, role of boards and how to use them. The units are going to teach those. But then, okay, group commanders and group staff, you're going to teach East services for leaders, advanced CAP communications, reaching out. So the units would teach to the teach to their members, the groups would teach to the unit, you know, the members within their group. And then the wing would take another chunk, such as care and feeding of a member, data-driven decision-making, working with CAC. And then they would find a way to present those. So that's another way that you could do this, is just by giving the responsibility out to the various echelons. Okay, here's another way you could do it. Okay, instead of, uh, instead of it all on residence, remember, you can do it blended. So complete some online, okay? You can do, say you could do advanced CAP communications online, reaching outside the squadron. Have all your members do this part online or just individually, you could do these online. And then your units, give your units another section and then assign the group or the wing these other, you know, these final ones. And that that's a really good idea, I think, for some of the very geographically large wings because you can't always, you know, not everybody can come to the wing event because of you know, geographical challenges. Here in Maryland, it is doable to come to a wing meeting, but it is a challenge for those on the Eastern shore or the folks out you know, in Cumberland. Um, it, it makes for a very long duty day for them. So again, this is that blended online and then on site, you have those. So how can you get involved? Okay, we need you to share this with your squadrons. We need you to personally engage and promote this. We need you to apply to be a member. I mean, to, I'm sorry, to be an instructor. Now, what goes into that right now? I said we had about 500 applications and our chairs are doing a phenomenal job of going through every one of those applications. Uh, every one of those applications has a resume, they're calling some people up and then these uh, instructor candidates will, event, will go through the training and become assistant instructors in the process. We have about 500. Now divide that out between 52 wings. That's not a lot, we need more, okay? In order for our members to get credit for the training that you have provided them, you basically need to be that set qualified instructor, okay? If you have that old officer base, um, the the ba um there not the officer basic course but there was a, there was an instructor course that is it might still be on e services on the learning management system if you have that it doesn't count you have to take the volunteer university become a qualified volunteer university instructor to be able to be that set qualified instructor to provide to give these members uh, the credit that they need for the courses that you've taught them. Um, so how do you do that? Okay, there's this, there's a right here on this on this uh, link, 
Um, and maybe uh, Colonel Winter, maybe you can put that in the chat and people will be able to, to click on it, um, I, you know, um, so that they, that link, um, go to that page. There's, an, there's a link to the application. It's gonna ask you some questions. There's some thought, thought provoking questions. I you know as an instructor, what would you do? What, you know, in this instance, how do you view, you know, teaching? And you and you let us know. Do you want to teach on site? Do you want to teach online? Do you want to do both? Um, it's up to you. So fill that out, and then you're going to be asked to send a resume in to that email address as, as well, capvolu at uh, capnhq.gov. And so apply as a as an instructor. Now I like to think of this. As if think back level one, okay, again, we only have 500 instructors right now. Oh, well, applications are not even instructors yet. Um, if you think about level one and you have these new members coming in and you're going to be working with them, well, how are you going to qualify them if you're not an instructor? So, in my mind, every squadron should have at least one qualified instructor. Sure, it should be your education and training officer. Um, I think the commander should be one as well, but you know what? Not everybody is a teacher and, and that's okay, but you should have more than one instructor. And, and personally, I think every, every squadron needs to have one. The wing level, there needs to be a whole bunch. So the more people we have trained and qualified to instruct, the better off we're gonna be. You won't have to put off training because you can't find somebody to qualify you. Um, so, I just saw the uh, a question pop in. What's an administrative leader? Okay, you can put in for an administrative leader. Those positions are all filled for this first year. The administrative leaders are our chairs. Okay, the, the chairs who basically either on the on-site side or the online side um, manage a level. However, our positions are, you know, hopefully they're only going to be like one-year duty assignments. So put your application in if you want to be an administrator leader as well. Put it in there, um, and then uh, when we're looking for for new chairs or assistant chairs, we can tap that application as well. There will be additional questions if you want to be an administrative leader. So also refer this to other members. I'm going. We're recording this. I will give you all the actual link to this uh, this uh, webinar, and so that you can show it at your you can show it at your squadron. You can send it out to your squadron. But this is this is where we're going, and so we need we need you to help share, promote, and actually get engaged, excited about it. I think CAP is really moving in the right direction here. I really do, and uh, I'm excited, and I know Colonel Winter is excited. Um, so, I'm gonna, if, I, if Colonel Winter can pop back on here, uh, maybe you can talk about some of the more popular questions that we're getting and or maybe some of the some of the questions you've been seeing here on the chat and uh, we can just answer them for the group between the two of us sure yeah so I think I've uh, I think I've answered all the questions that came through I know buddy I need to still follow up with you um, but what one of the questions uh, that I think came up once or, tw or at least twice is uh, can you use can you take a module that's in a level above you um, and, and the short answer is no. Um, and, and the rationale behind that is because we're putting you into cohorts uh, and we want you to be able to work and interact in that level that you're currently in. Um, however, I, I do see a path down the line where we might make that uh, uh, available, but initially no, the answer is no. Uh, and more importantly, the, the rationale behind that thinking was because it's module based, we want to be able to uh, keep that current again fresh and that content uh, relevant to the current day Civil Air Patrol. So that's one of the, the rationales for us. However, if you're a previous cadet or you have military equivalency, that that training or that equivalency credit will still be given to you if even if it is already sitting in level five. So I hope that answers that question. That was one of the, the big ones, Colonel Reed. Um, I think in general, some of the other questions was, you know, all my former training doesn't count anymore. Well, that, that's not true. And that's that's not a great approach to kind of take a look at that. Um, your training absolutely applies in the sense of, of where we are. But the, the quick story I can give you is uh, I'm 43 years old and I've completed level five. I probably, at least I sure hope, uh, that I've got at least 20 or 30 more years left in Silver Patrol. Uh, and the reality is I never, ever have to take another professional development course in my Civil Air Patrol career. 
if I don't want to. And that that's not the type of mentality that we want. And, and what I would express it or, or make you sort of think about is, um, are we doing best by our membership uh, if we just let everyone quickly just run through levels one through five and be done with it. No, that's not that's not what we're trying to get after. You know, uh, as the former cadet officer school director, one of the, our motto of that school is Encaro Imparo, and that's Latin for I'm always learning or still learning. Uh, and, and then that mentality that we're trying to embrace is that we always have to continue to continue to learn. And we know that there's content out there that we're trying to make sure is, again, fresh and relevant to the current Civil Air Patrol challenges that we face. What else we got, Colonel Reed? Not seeing any other additional questions coming in at this point. I think at this point, um, we really need more instructors. And if you apply, there is a little bit of a wait time to get through just the application process. You know, again, our chairs are going through every one of these, and then you would go into, you know, the training. Right now, it is online, but you know, we can we can you know once COVID is we're, we're allowed, we we can do you know there can be a, an in residence one day class is what the instructor training is designed to be. Um, I think that pretty much wraps it up. If there's no other questions, then we can just wrap it up. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry, ahead, Colonel Reed. Yes, John Pack, how are hey, you? Sorry, I cannot type on the uh, chat, so sorry about that's, not being able no, to do that. That's fine. What you, what you got, John? So assuming that you have either level, let's say you, you have level four, level five, and you would like to teach, um, which level would you be assigned to teach, or how does that work? Okay, so if you have level four or five, you would be assigned at, it would depend if you had level four and you were, you have held level four for at least a year, then you could teach level four or level three or level two or level one. You can choose, okay? You don't have to teach level four just because you're at that level. You know, um, we have a lot, of, we have some members who, actually have a lot of, you know, maybe they were a former cadet and former military, you know, and they want to teach level two because you have those different paths. Um, that would be a great place for them. But you can teach anywhere as long as you have held at least a year in that level. Um, in that scenario you gave me, you would not be permitted to teach level five. Does that help? Yes, thank you very much. Okay. So um, I see uh, this training already for instructors already started. Our chairs are taking the training right now. And so uh, my hope is that by the end of next week, we will start getting the, uh, the instructors into the online training course. But right now the chairs, you know, they're gonna be, you're working with the instructors. And so they have to go through the same training that the instructors have to. Uh, Colonel Winter and I also had to take the training. So, um, so we'll all have, the, we'll, we'll all be on the same, same uh, foundation. Yeah, and, and I'll add, don't let the training sound uh, or be a barrier to you um, of applying, because I, I will tell you um, that one of, one of our passionate sort of approaches to this was, you know, we expect that everyone is an instructor, right? We, and, and I'll be honest, I'll raise my hand, right? And say that I've been to a lot of CAP events where some of the folks are, uh, I'm, you know, I'm doing this. I'm like, can we get done with this? Uh, and then I've been to others where I'm like, holy cow, that's better than any college course I ever took. Um, so we want to find that happy medium and provide the tools. And, and honestly, we 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 are, uh, I think, responsible to provide those tools to ensure that we we maintain that level of professionalism in the new education training program. Uh, so I think you'll be pleasantly surprised uh, at how good the, the training is, and it'll also give you quite a few hip pocket ideas on how to manage the classroom, how to how to take control of folks that may be, you know, the ones that are overtaking the, the conversation, or how do you pull conversation out of those that may not be uh, all that engaging, as two quick examples of how I think uh, some really tangible lessons that'll help you sort of uh, be a better instructor and facilitator. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so Colonel Winter, there's a question here. Can we retake level one if we are a higher level? Um, yes, the answer is yes, but our, our priority will go to those that need it just to get through the, the cohort group. Uh, but the, especially in the on-site environment, um, if there's space available, there's not going to be, a, they're not going to stop you from attending. Okay, great. And then uh, I, can, I, I can answer this one, but there's a question. Will the professional development officer be renamed education and training officer? And the answer to that is yes. 
So we're, we're going away with the prof term professional development and it's being renamed education and training. And Colonel Reed, how does this affect the, uh, let's assume you want to do another uh, specialty track because you already have a master in one. Um, I won't have to go through the levels all over again, right? Say that you know, for a special, no, no, you, you, you start where you are. We're not making everybody go through this all over again. Okay. Yes. So, so you, uh, if you've already got a master rating, then, then that, you, you know, that, that's what you keep. Uh, I know you're working at, with the online national staff college. You don't have to start over again, you know. Um, now saying that you complete national staff college, you still have that grandfather period to get through all of your other requirements for level five uh, so that you can get that credit for the National Staff College. Okay, and one thing I, I did wanna, wanna say, and I don't think we, we brought it up in here, is so, you know, in the past, you have, you've taken, you know, say you were prior military and you had a squadron officer school or Air Command and Staff College or Air War College, and you were able to just get a full waiver for, for Region Staff College or National Staff College. Um, that's not going to happen here. You're going to get credit for specific modules that you will not have to take, uh, but you're not just going to get a total waiver for the level. And why are we doing that? Uh, because there's a lot of CAP related courses that you still need. Um, I, I, you know, I can, I can tell you, and I know Colonel Winter also, we both took Air Command and Staff College. And you know, a lot of that did not apply, I would say most of that did not apply to my CAP world. I will never fly an F-22, but you know, I, I took it, I learned a lot, but it's not going to help me in, in so much in CAP. So I would get credit for specific leadership modules, things like that, but the CAP specific modules, you're still going to have to take. And there's also some, some of that equivalencies for and uh, Colonel Winter, you can correct me if I'm I'm um, not getting them all, but for uh, National Safety Officer College, uh, the IG College, I think the legal officer, I think there's a legal officer and, and chaplains, I think. So there right. will be a few equivalencies for those, but it's not a complete waiver for all of the modules. Yeah. Um and you don't learn a lot, and I don't apply a lot from Air Command and Staff College. I date them either as an Air Force officer. But, <laughs> so, but one of the one of the things that uh, I would encourage folks to think about if you're on the fence for uh, joining the instructor cadre is put an application in, right? So the online application is quick. We ask you to put together a resume. It doesn't have to be a, a five-page, you know, resume. It could be a simple one pager about you know some of your experience facilitating classes before, um, and our and our uh, team will do a quick scrub and they'll set up essentially either a virtual or telephonic a quick little how you doing interview, uh, and then we'll we'll put that through the approval process. Um, and what I would encourage folks to think about is every squadron should have an instructor uh, and you already have one. So it's just a matter of, I think, tapping somebody on the shoulder, what you know used to be called formerly known as your professional development officer at your squadron uh, and saying, hey, I think you, you know, if you're comfortable, take this course, help us lead this charge uh, going forward. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's not meant to be uh, a challenge, you know, in terms of getting through the instructor process. I, I, like I said, I think you'll be, all of you will be pleasantly surprised. One, it's not, it's not very fast at the moment, just because as Colonel Reed said, we've got about 500 in the backlog, uh, but no doubt um, uh, we'll get through that backlog and get all those uh, folks approved. I feel bad for all those wing and region commanders that are having to approve all these uh, uh, nominations. So, sorry. So, okay. So I, uh, there's one other one and I answered it in the, in the chat, but I have a senior member who's completed both level three and four, but is a first lieutenant who is waiting on time before being promoted to captain. Um, can they work on level five or do they have to wait until they become a major before they can do level five? My understanding is if once they have achieved a specific level, the new, le the, the new modules will open up. So if they completed level four, they should be able to work towards level five, but again, they have, you know, before they can get their level five, they have all those other things they have to do, you know, the mentoring and uh, serving on staff. So is that correct, Colonel Winter? Yes, ma'am. And I, and I think somebody had a similar question earlier. And, you know, again, that the rationale behind that is 
We just want to make sure that you're getting the most current content. That was why the module uh, approach was taken. You comment on this construct applies to specialty tracks. Okay, so the specialty tracks, if you, re if you if we go back to this right here, you can see over here, this, there's going to be a specialty track section within the education and training division. And so that's coming. So, um, what, so what we're focusing on is primarily the education and training within the volunteer university construct. Um, the mentoring is still being worked out and specialty tracks are, are coming. So there are, uh, there's not specific specialty track related modules at this time. I cannot tell you what the specialty track section will look like. Uh, maybe Colonel Winter has an idea, but that's outside my lane. So I haven't even you know, gotten involved in that. Yeah, and to be honest with you, our focus, my focus has been solely on Volunteer University. I know they're trying to identify a, kind of a key stakeholder to take over the specialty track uh, revamp, uh, but I would call that sort of phase two or phase three of the overall chief uh, or education and training program. Um, so the stuff will stay as it is, uh, but ultimately that is a priority of General Smith is to revamp and, and change the specialty track. So. Okay, then I'm going to scroll back to this last page. Um, if you have questions, feel free to contact either Colonel Winter or myself. Here's our email addresses are right here. Um, I'm going to send this out and I will send you out the slide deck so that you can you know, sh share it with your squadrons, your groups, your wings, um, and we can start promoting this um, because it, it's going to happen before we know it. So I encourage everybody, get your applications in if you want to be an instructor. And I thank you all. Thank you, Colonel Winter, for participating in this. And uh, you all have a good evening.